Yo guys, what the hell is going on? This is CSS for Beginners Lesson 37 and today we're going to talk all about margins. That's coming up. Okay, so first of all, let's just have a recap of what the box model is. We said that we've got our element here in the middle, which is given a specific width and height. Then around that we have some padding, which is the internal spacing within the element itself. Then we can have a border if we wish. And then finally, the space that separates it from other elements is the margin around the perimeter of the element itself. So we're going to look at the margin in more detail in this video, and we're going to jump back into the code to do that. All right, guys, so here I am back in the code, and it's exactly the same as last time. We've got these two div tags here, both with a class of box and this content in between. And then we've styled them here with a class selector of box. We've given each one a margin of 30 pixels, a padding of 30 pixels, and a one pixel solid border, which is black. So let's just view this again in a browser and see what's going on. All right, so there it is, and this here is the content, and we've got some padding here around the content, a border, and then the margin between the two elements. Let's just inspect the element in Google DevTools, and we can see there the orange, which is what we're going to be looking at today, is the margin, okay? And we specified margin, 30 pixels, and that says, hey, browser, I've just specified one value, so that means apply this value to the top, right, bottom, and left side of the element. So it's giving the margin all around the element. OK, now what if we wanted to control the top differently or the right differently or the bottom differently or the left differently? Well, we can do that. We can specify a value for each one. OK, and let's have a look how we do that. So right here, we've given one value and that applies the margin to all sides of the element. OK, if we wanted to give each side um, a different value, we can do that by specifying four values. So I'll just write these first of all. OK, and then I'll go through it. So what we're seeing here is we start at the top. The first value is the top and we work clockwise around the element. So we're saying the top here is 30 pixels. We want the margin to be 30 pixels on the right, which is next around in the clock. We want it to be 20 pixels, give it a right margin of 20 pixels. And then at the bottom, we want a 15 pixel margin. And then on the left, a five pixel margin. OK, that makes sense. So that's how we're controlling each individual side margin. So let's see in a browser what's happened. OK, we can't really see there because not much has changed. But if we right click this now and inspect in the, uh, the element, there we go. You can see now the uh, the top one is 30 pixels. OK, uh, the right one, a bit smaller, 20 pixels. Bottom one, a little bit smaller again, 15 pixels. And the left one is very small. That's the five pixel margin. And it even says that here. You see in the, uh, the bottom right hand corner of Google Chrome tools, we've got the margin values here. It says it around the, the perimeter. OK. So that's how we control each one individually. Now, there's other ways. There's other shorthand ways we can do this. Say we want the top and bottom to be 30 pixels and we want the right and left to be 15 pixels. Well, we can do that. We can do it by specifying two values. And that there, my friends, is saying, OK, give the top and bottom a value of 30 pixels and the left and right a value of 15 pixels. So let's just make sure this has worked and view it in a browser once again. And inspect the element. And cool, there we go, guys. You can see now the left and right are the same and the top and bottom are the same. And again, it, sh it shows the exact values here in DevTools. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now, there's one more shorthand we can do. And uh, I don't use this one often, but you can use it if you like. If we add a third value, what we're saying now is we want the top to be 30 pixels. We want the right to be 15 pixels, we want the bottom to be 20 pixels, and because there's not a fourth parameter or a fourth value specified, it's getting to the left and it doesn't know what that is. So it says, hey, well, I've got one for, uh, for the right, which is 15 pixels, so I'm just gonna match that. So the left will automatically match this 15 pixels. So essentially, this is top, left and right, and bottom, okay? So that's the last shorthand method we can use. So let's just view this once more in a browser. Let's make sure it's worked. Inspect the element. And yeah, there it is. You can see here 30 pixels, 15 pixels, 20 pixels, and 15 pixels again. So the left and right match each other. Right, okay then. So in the last lesson, I talked about the margin collapse. Okay, so let's just go back to the code for a second. And I'm going to just say 30 pixels all around. So top, bottom, left and right. They're all going to have 30 pixels margin. Then we'll view this again in a browser. And inspect the element. So 
the, the, I said in the last lesson that we've got this property, uh, sorry, this element here, which has a margin bottom of 30 pixels, and then this one here, which has a margin top of 30 pixels. Now, the margin between them is only 30 pixels, but it, you, you would think it would be 60 pixels, right? Because we've got a margin top of 30 and a margin bottom of 30. So they should add up and give you 60 pixels, right? Well, no, that's not the way that CSS works in browsers. And this is called the, ver uh, the vertical margin collapse, okay? So essentially when you have two elements stacked on top of each other and they both have a margin associated with it, one a margin on the bottom and one a margin on the top, then those two margins collapse when they meet each other. So if those margins are identical, which they are in this case, they're both 30 pixels, then they collapse and they become 30 pixels in total, the margin between the two. And if we have one margin larger than the other, then they collapse and it will take the larger of the two margins. So let's just change this to 15 pixels, 15 pixels, 15 pixels. So what we're saying there is we want a 30 pixel top margin, 15 right, 15 bottom and 15 down. However, the space between these is still 30 pixels. You see that one there is 15 pixels at the bottom, but this is still 30 pixels at the top. So when the margins collapse, it's still accepting that larger value of 30 pixels, okay? Now you might think this is counterintuitive, but you're just gonna have to accept that. That's the way that CSS works in browsers. And there are reasons for it. Um, for example, if you didn't style P tags, and you display them normally in a browser, if the margins didn't collapse, then between every p tag, there's gonna be a humongous gap and that's gonna look a bit silly. So it's there to help you out and you can get around it. You know, it's not easy to, uh, sorry, it's not hard to, to kind of combat this. So um, we've looked at the shorthand methods and we've looked at the margin collapse. What we're gonna look at now is just a couple of nifty techniques that I use sometimes, okay? Now, say we want this box to be Oops, I've got rid of the border there. Say we want this box to be a width of, I don't know, 300 pixels, right? Let's just view that in a browser and see what happens. Okay, cool, so the box is 300 pixels, but you might think, well, actually, I want this box to be central. So I wanna specify left and right margins, which is gonna bring this box to the center here. But I don't actually know what those margins should be, okay? Um, I don't know the width of this container for some reason or other, or when the browser shrinks, then the container's gonna shrink as well. So we want those boxes, regardless of how big this container is, to sit in the middle. Now, how do I do that? Well, that is where the margin auto property comes in. So let's take a look at that. We saw before that we can have two values like this, and then this would be the top and bottom margin and this the left and right, okay? Now we want the left and right to be made up so that it centers the, um, the boxes. So we'd use auto because we don't know what that margin should be. And what auto is saying, okay, is give the left and right margins a property which is automatic workout an automatic property for me, which is gonna sit this box in the middle. So let's save that and view it in the browser, make sure it does. And cool, there we go. So we'll right click this, inspect the element, and now you can see it's given those left and right margins an automatic value which is equal and sits the content in the middle. Okay, so that's a really cool technique. I use that all the time. Um, and there's one more thing I wanna show you, and that's percentages. So say we have uh, a width of 50%, yeah? Now again, we want it to sit in the middle, um, and we know that if the width is 50%, then there's 50% room left, so we can have a 25% margin, okay? For this to work, we need to get rid of the padding. Because remember, the padding is all part of the box model. In fact, no, I won't get rid of that. It won't make much effect. Anyway, there we go. So we're saying we want this width of 50% to sit in the middle, then on each side, there's gonna be a margin of 25%. So we can work with percentages in margins as well. That's absolutely fine. So let's view this in the browser once again. Cool, and there you can see it's still sitting in the middle, it's 50% the width, but if we shrink the browser now, um, this doesn't work. Okay, I've not made this a percentage value, so it won't work in this case, but generally speaking, this is a good way of kind of controlling the width of elements, uh, positioning them in the middle, 
and they'll scale down for responsive websites too. That's a little bit advanced, so I'm not going to go into it in this chapter now, or this video rather. I may do a series on responsive design in the future. You can check that out then. So that's about it for margin. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. I'll answer all of those. Otherwise, if you enjoy these videos, please like them, subscribe or share them, and I'll see you, uh, see you guys in the next one where we're going to look at padding.